Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Emax Nanohawk X, an ultralight 1S 3 inch micro quadcopter. Now I know that I'm kind of late to the party since this quadcopter has been around for quite a while now, but since I really like this little fellow, I'm going to provide you with a quick review in which I'm going to go over its features and specs, give him a feedback after testing it out, and of course show you some flight footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, here is everything that comes inside the box of the Nanohawk X. So along with the quadcopter, you're getting two spur propellers. So definitely in case you are going to get this quadcopter, you will need to purchase extra propellers as these fragile propellers can be damaged easily. You're also getting some stickers, a 450 mAh 1S LHV battery, which is using an XT30 battery connector, a simple USB charger, which is capable of charging six LHV batteries that are using a PH2.0 plug simultaneously. And since you need to charge batteries with an XT30 battery connector, you are getting two adapters, which are going to enable you to charge these batteries along with this charger. You are also getting a PH2.0 to a male XT30 plug, which can be used although I don't recommend to do it, for powering the quadcopter using a battery which is using a PH2.0 plug. And you are also getting a small bag that contains a small Phillips screwdriver, some spare screws, and spare rubber bands which are used for securing the battery on the bottom of the frame. As for its packs, the Nanohawk X features 1202.5 11,000 kV motors. These motors, in conjunction with these 3 inch bioblade propellers, are going to make the Nanohawk X an extremely silent flyer and also make it pretty efficient. On the center of the quadcopter, you can find an all in one F4 flight controller that features an integrated 5 amperes BLLES 4 in 1 ESC and also an integrated SPIRX FR Sky D8 slash D16 ready receiver. On top of it, a 37 channels VTX that supports TBS smart audio protocol and has a selectable output power of 25 and 200 milliwatts. It is connected to a simple linear antenna. And as for the FPB camera, the Nanohawk X features the Runcam Nano 3, which is a pretty good FPB camera for its size. As for the frame, its wheelbase is 120 millimeters. And as implied by the name of this quadcopter, it features a true X pattern. The thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 2.5 millimeters. Without a battery, the Nanohawk X weighs 41.9 grams, and including the bundled 450 mAh 1S LHV battery, the total weight is 54.6 grams. Considering that this is a 3 inch quadcopter, the Nanohawk X is very light, and using this battery, you'll be able to achieve flight times of between 3.5 to 6 minutes, depending on how you fly which is pretty impressive for the category of this quadcopter. In addition, as you can hear, the Nanohawk X is very quiet and you can easily hear me talking over the sound of the quadcopter. As for beta flight configuration, here is a quick overview of the default settings. The quadcopter is pre-tuned for you, and as always, the dump settings are included down below, so in case you need to, you can simply use them. As for binding the built-in SPIRX receiver, first you can choose whether to set it to FRSKID, which stands for FRSKID8 protocol, or FRSKX, which stands for FRSKID16 protocol. If possible, I recommend to stick to FRSKID8 protocol, and in order to enter bind mode, you can either use the receiver tab on Metaflight, or use the CLI tab, by entering bind underscore rx and then press enter. The receiver bind mode is going to be indicated by a flashing LED on the flight controller, which is going to be changed once the radio receiver is successfully bound with your radio controller. Then all you need to do is to make sure that all the sticks are working properly, define your favorite flight modes and OSD elements, and you're going to be pretty much good to go. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Emacs Nanohawk X. And overall, after testing it out, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, 
I really like this little quadcopter because first of all, it flies great, so the performance is really good, the fly time is good as well, it is pretty durable, a 2.5mm thick bottom plate is good for the size of this quadcopter, and I think that it's going to be a good option for a beginner who would like to advance from something like the Emax Tinahawk or similar quadcopters, but keep in mind that the Nanohawk X is going to be good mainly for flying it outdoors, whereas this type of quadcopter is also good for indoors. As for the downsides, the main problem that I had with the Emax Tinahawk X is that the range of the built-in SPRX receiver is not very good, so you are going to be limited pretty much by the ready receiver and not by the VTX which performed really good. I hope that on the next version of this quadcopter and maybe also in future versions of Binafly quadcopters by Emacs, they are going to start integrating Express LRS receivers into their models and then this issue is going to be solved. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, so I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.